Hi everyone, my name is Par. The summer I've been working. I guess I'll just wait a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll start over. My name is Par. The summer I've been working in Agrawal Lab, where we've been doing a research on the effects of fungicide residues on the growth and feeding of monarch butterfly larvae. So recent studies and surveys have shown that the overall population of monarch butterfly is unfortunately declining. This graph over here shows the number of monarchs that are present in central Mexico every winter. And as you can see, the population has been gradually declining since 1995. And this graph over here shows the number of monarchs that are present in California and Northern Baja every falls. And you can still see the same thing where the population of Western monarchs has been declining since 1997. And since um, monarchs live in various regions in the United States and Canada, these two graphs basically shows that regardless of what regions they're in, the overall population of monarch is indeed declining. There are many factors that contribute to the um, monarch's decline population, such as human activities and climate change. Um, but there's abundant um, evidence that shows that pesticide residues also plays a major role in the monarch's decline. For example, a recent study in 2023 shows that insecticide residues can result in a decline in mating as well as the number of eggs laid, which is a direct factor in the monarch's declining population. There hasn't been enough research done on the fungicides, so we decided to focus on two types of active ingredients in fungicides called suprodenol and diphenconazole. The reason we chose this fungicide is because of the amount that are present in local farms in Tompkins County. So these bars here basically show the amount of fungicides that are present in the strawberry plants, the targeted species. And then this bar here shows the amount of fungicides that are present in the milkweed plants that are embedded within the strawberry farms. And the doses that we chose for experiment is significantly lower than the doses that you would find in a big conventional farm. So butterflies, the adult ones feed on nectar of various flowers and plants, but the caterpillars exclusively feed on milkweed that has a defensive chemicals called cardinalite that they have sequestered and stored in their tissue till the development. So this is an example of the amount of cardinalized presence in the leaves that they consume and the amount of cardinalized pre presence in their wings. This basically means that if they are more cardinalized in the leaves that they eat, they will be more cardinalized in their wings. And these cardinalites are also extremely toxic to other animals and insects. So it serves as a like protection from predators like birds who would notice the bright colors in the butterfly wings and they would automatically recognize that as a presence of toxins. So they would like leave the monarchs alone. For the purpose of our research, we decided to focus on three different species of milkweed, um, Asclepius, Spirula, Cursavica, and Soraica, due to their range concentrations from high to low. The main things that we wanted to investigate from our research is whether fungicides have any impact on the three different species and whether those consumption of three different species have any effect on the overall growth of the caterpillars. And we hypothesize that higher doses of fungicides will result in reduction in larval growth and that Aspirilla will be consumed the least because it has the highest toxin. So what um, we got our eggs from this organization called the Monarch Watch. Um, we grew all of our plants in the growth chambers in our lab. And what we did was we took small punches like this uh, from the leaves of all the species and then apply those punches for like different uh, doses of both fungicides. And we set up our experiment using a bunch of deli cups that you can see over here. And each deli cup has like one caterpillar, caterpillar that has one treatment and obviously the sample number. After we were done feeding the caterpillars, um, we removed the leaf punches from the deli cup and then put them in like small pieces of paper. And then we use this app called Leaf Bite. What basically does is you take a photo of like the leaf that you want to analyze and it tells you like the total leaf area, consume leaf area and percent consume. And using, using these numbers and other numbers from our data, we were able to calculate the amount of um, leaf punches that were eaten by the caterpillars. And at the end of our experiment, we weighed every caterpillars in a micro balance to determine the mass, which is what we use to measure their growth. This is um, our first result where we are looking at whether consumption rate differs across um, milkweed species, regardless of fungicides in those. 
And this, base, this graph is basically telling us that it doesn't matter what fungicides and dosage, dosage that they receive, the fungicides that were um, fed as sparulum ate the least amount of tissue compared to caterpillars that receive um, Carisavica and Saraiga. This is kind of what we predicted because Asperula has the, um, the highest amount of cardinolites. They also have the thickest leaf, but it's possible that they didn't like the bitter taste and that they had trouble digesting it. So next we looked at whether consumption of those different species affect their growth. And we're see seeing a similar thing here where Asperula has the lowest mass. This is making sense so far because they're eating less of Asperula. So it makes sense that they're going less on Asperula. The interesting part, though, is that when we looked at consumption efficiency, which is basically how much body mass they gain for every leaf punch that they consume, and asperula has the lowest consumption efficiency, which is very surprising to all of us. Um, we haven't performed any chemistry, so we're not really sure why this is how it is. But I think it has to do, it has to do with something in asperula that is causing the caterpillars to... Um, uh, absorb less of its nutrient content. Um, and these results show that even though the caterpillars have evolved to detoxify the toxic um, chemicals, even extreme levels of cardinalized can still have an overall negative impact on the caterpillars. So moving on to how um, different fungicides affect the overall growth of the caterpillars, this graph focuses on diphenconazole, one of the fungicides. As you can see, there is basically no correlation between um, a diphenconazole that was applied on Carisavica and Saraiga, but we are seeing a negative trend over here for Asperula, where caterpillars that had lower doses of diphenconazole has a lower mass compared to um, Carisavica and Saraiga. But then again, the first three results shows that they were eating less Asperula and they were growing less. So this could just be a matter of uh, the milkweed species rather than the fungicides. So this is the most important part of our research. Um, this is for ciprogenol. As you can see, there is a strong correlation between the growth of the caterpillar and the higher doses of ciprogenol, where caterpillars that had higher doses of ciprogenol um, had the lower mass across all species of milkweed. This is kind of what we were hoping to achieve. Um, we're not really sure why there is like not the same effect for uh, diphenconazole. So the main things that I want you guys to take home from my research is to recognize how pesticide residues may play a role in the monarch's overall declining population. Um, and I have mentioned earlier that we use like lower doses of the fungicides because it's based on the local farms. So even at a low dose, we are already seeing like a negative impact. So higher doses probably have more greater impacts on the caterpillars. Uh, and by doing this research, I hope that it's going to assist the agriculture community and coming up with alternative native, like alternative methods of spraying fungicides, um, potentially at low doses while also producing successful crops. Uh, I don't know what's going on over here, but I want to acknowledge my mentor for being so patient and kind of the experiment and Max for helping out a lot with our experiment and my PI for all the advice given throughout the presentation, I mean, before the presentation and throughout the experiment. And my friends for making my first ex uh, internship such a fun and memorable experience. And of course, my uh, BTI, Cornell, Cornell University, and NSF for the amazing opportunity. Um, Lily? All right, well, that was a really great presentation. I really enjoyed it. I just have a question on how do um, these butterflies detoxify cardinolites differently than other insects? Thanks for your question. Um, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of chemistry, so I didn't really <laughs> uh, learn the chemistry part of this, but my basic understanding is that cardinolites like um, bind on like the sodium potassium enzyme for some reason, it beans wealth in like other animal cells. So it automatically like shuts down their system and function, but it does not bean wealth in the monarch butterflies. So it ended up serving as like a protection from the cardinolites, which is why they're able to detoxify the toxins. Thank you. Hi. Um, so my question is a couple times throughout your presentation, you mentioned that you're using concentrations based on local farms. Can you talk about like 
maybe the difference between the concentrations they use at the local farms and the bigger farms and like why you choose the local farm concentration? Um, so I can go back to that. Okay, so this is the, basically these are all the different doses that we chose. So based on my understanding, the low doses would be from like zero to like 10,000 that you would find in like local farms. And the high doses would be like 100,000 to 300,000 parts per billion. And because we only chose like two doses, we still don't really know how like the higher doses will affect the uh, uh, overall growth of the caterpillars. And because um, we're working with like the local farms here, that's why we decided to choose the, uh, our, do our doses based on the amount present in the local farms. That was really good, uh, Par, great, great talk. Um, I am curious that you mentioned something earlier. Um, I don't know if I heard this right, but you said that the butterfly wings are toxic. Was that correct? Um, so yeah, if I could go back to the slides. Uh, okay, not, okay. Is it this one? Is this one? Yes, they are toxic. Uh, so there are like a bunch of articles that I read that the, the cardinalites that they consume as larvae is kind of like distributed in their wings as adults. And I think that those cardinalites is probably one of the things that is causing them to have bright colors, which is kind of, um, kind of like a sign for many predators to see that as like a presence of toxin. Awesome, thank you. No problem. I had a question about the, the leaf bite app that you used. Uh -huh. um, and I was just wondering if you had any issues with it uh, because it seems like from my understanding, you take a picture of it and like the program kind of like figures out where that bite is, but yeah, you could explain um, a further. I would say um, that was definitely one of the issues that we experienced. Um, what the app does is you take a photo and sometimes it doesn't, because of like the brightness of the leaf, it doesn't always recognize some parts of the leaves as the like the overall part of the leaf. So it only takes like what it thinks is the total area of the leaf based on the picture that it sees. So um, it using all of our numbers from our data, it seems pretty accurate. So we decided to just use those for our data. And many people in our lab have also used that in the past. So we just uh, decided that it was accurate enough. Uh, hi, sorry, uh, just to clarify, uh, for the Asarula, is it that the monarchs were eating less of it or did they just happen to have like a lower mass? Yes, to both. So Asperula is the most, the most toxic one and because it is so toxic, it is like the least common host plant, which is why they're eating less of it, which is why they're growing less, which is basically uh, how we measure their mass. Okay, so do you know if Asperula has any cardiac glycosides? <clears throat> that um, are specifically more toxic to monarchs that Kurosawa or Sriaika don't have? Sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, do you know if Asperula has any specific cardiac glycosides that are specifically more toxic to monarchs that Kurosawa and Sriaika don't For, have? I'm not really sure of like the different types of cardinalites they are. Um, I just kind of all collectively recognize them as like cardinalites that are present in milkweed. So it's possible that the Asperula has like different types of cardinalites that's more toxic to the monarchs, but uh, I'm not at that part of the research yet. So simple answer is I'm not sure. Sure, thanks, Thank it's a great presentation. Thank you very much.